Welcome to a special edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode, th- uh, oh boy, what is it now, 446. I'm Kevin Carlson. And I'm Lee McMahon, and today is the 11th of October, 2018. So from time to time, you probably notice we add characters to Anglican Unscripted, and I'm adding the uh, leader in charge of, uh, it's called Amy, it's the Anglican mission in England, and they're trying to reform, retake England for Christ. And uh, it was a charge from GAFCON 2 uh, that met Nairobi that says, listen, uh, we've given up. Uh, England is not something that can all be restructured from within, obviously. We may have to do it from within and outside uh, the church. And somebody started, said, uh, I think it was Peter Jensen said, let's set up the organization. And now we have a fully functioning um, mission statement uh, for the Anglican mission in England. And I thought you and I could sit down and talk about it because um, out there in the world of Anglicanism, you guys get a lot of support, but you also get a lot of criticism. And I thought it'd be a great chance to talk about it. Uh, welcome to the program, Lee. Thanks very much. Great, it's great to be uh, chatting to you. Yeah, we, I think you're right. We. Uh, there are people around the world that uh, think what we are doing is great. We've got people that are, uh, shall I say, concerned about what we are doing. And I guess it's just a bit of, or maybe quite a lot of misunderstanding of what uh, what Amy is all about. So that would be nice to chat to you. You can ask us some questions, some of maybe our, our strengths, weaknesses, some of our vision, and see if we can maybe uh, clarify some of what we're doing. What, you want a hard-hitting interview? No, I don't think so. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. Come on. <laughs> I go for your, your hardest question. <laughs> well, let's talk a little bit. What is your role uh, in the Anglican Mission in England? So one day a week, I work as the mission director of the Anglican Mission in England. Uh, for the rest of my time, um, I'm, I'm a husband uh, to, to Vicky. I've got three kids, and uh, I'm also... Uh, a church planter so I planted a church uh, with some folk last year last May so most of my time is spent in a place called Scarborough on the on the east coast of England uh, basically trying to, to spread the gospel to grow a healthy Anglican church uh, which is part of Amy but one day a week or you know what that kind of means a little bit more than one day a week um, I work as a mission director and my main responsibility is is to try and see if we can we got a vision to see by 2025 we want to see at least 25 um, Amy churches in England and by 20, 20, uh, 2050 to see 250 Amy churches. So my main responsibility is is under God to, to see um, if we can make that happen. So that's my main responsibility. And when you think about how does, how does that happen? Well, uh, I guess there are three main ways into Amy. Uh, we've got younger leaders, so we want to recruit another generation of convinced, convicted, uh, creative Anglican evangelicals. Uh, so we talk about how to get them uh, recruited and ordained and then trained up to be pastors and planted. So that's kind of one aspect. Uh, we want to find church planters who are convinced Anglicans who already are prepared. And so we want to help resource them and deploy them. And then also there are existing churches because you probably heard that um, all is not well in England, uh, there are some there are some problems, uh, some huge issues actually. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I mean, so you're saying you're going for the cathedrals because that's where the biggest issues seem to be. Well, if we got <laughs> if we got a cathedral, that'd be interesting, wouldn't it? A cathedral yeah. that wants to join the Anglican mission in England. So if there is a if there's a convinced Anglican who leads a, cath- a cathedral in England, now that's a bit, be a bit of a challenge. Um, but a convinced Anglican that wants to lead their church family to to join Amy. Uh, they can always they can always email me. That'd be an interesting conversation. But uh, we've got existing churches who um, some church plant, some existing churches of hundreds of years, who are so troubled by the state of England and so troubled by the state of the Church of England uh, that uh, we're talking to us about whether to join us. I'm hearing your accent. Uh, is that an English accent? Oh, I've got a mongrelized accent. I really <laughs> have. It's all over the place. I grew up in Scotland. Okay, and that's that. Okay, that's what, my ears picking up the Scottish. Yeah, yeah, so, all right. Scottish. But okay. I'm almost forty this year, so I've, I, I actually I'm forty this year, and I've now lived more of my life in England, so it's completely mongrelized. Uh, but it is a bit bizarre that you have a, a Scotsman 
as the mission director of the Anglican Mission in Europe. So, oh no, I had <laughs> of England. Maybe we should rename ourselves. No, maybe. I'm just. Europe. I'm waiting for you to lift up your stick and go freedom. Yeah, that's, that's, that's <laughs> yeah, we so, don't want freedom. We want reformation. <laughs> Let's talk a, a, a little bit about um, kind of your, your rough start. Okay, uh, you you were established right after GAFCON two. Um, but you guys had some uh, communication missteps. Talk a little bit about that. Well, we've had <laughs> nothing's perfect. Um, nothing's perfect, and we're we're not perfect. We've got strengths and weaknesses. I think <laughs> one of our one of our strengths is that we want to be we want to be known for what we are for. And I mm -hmm. don't. This is not just a political statement, but genuinely, we we don't want to be known as as an organisation that exists to be against error. Um, there's a rightness to stand up for truth and a, a, a rightness to be refuting error. That's what the Bible teaches. That's what our our formularies teach. It's what um, happens at your ordination vows. You want to set, uh, but we want to be known for for mission. So the clue is, you know, we are the Anglican mission in England. So we were formed to play our part in reaching England for Jesus. And um, so we want to be about planting churches. Now, in the early days, and you know, this is, I think, this was a mistake. Um, we we talked about Amy as being a lifeboat. Um, right. I think yeah. that's on. I think that's on. I think it's. I think it's a, a healthy, unfortunate way of talking because um, a lifeboat. Most people think of the Titanic, sinking ship, lifeboat on the side, and what that means is that your main focus is to rescue people from the sinking ship. That is the Church of England, and to provide a safe haven for people that are broken and battered and need to be helped. Okay. But actually, we should be about primarily about mission, trying to reach people in England to, who need Jesus. So in England, as well as, and it's the same in America, isn't it? As well as having lifeboats on cruise liners, you've got a Coast Guard. Uh, we've, got, we've got lifeboats up and down the country. So one of our big things is we want to be a fleet of rescue ships, a fleet of lifeboats. Uh, the focus is we want to see more and more churches started up. Uh, that will reach people for Jesus. So as well as rescuing those who are battered by uh, by the toxic nature of the Church of England, and that's true, we want to rescue people like that, but we, we want them to join our fleet and rescue more people for Jesus. So I think that was a communication mistake. Uh, it, it doesn't help us. Uh, but then we got a bit of traction probably the last two years. Um, GAFCON uh, decided that they would have Andy Lyons consecrated. The ACNA were wonderful at supporting this, of, of making it happen. Uh, they did a thorough job of, of assessing Andy to see if he was right to be a GAFCON missionary bishop. That was very exciting for us. Um, it was, a, it was a, a huge credibility issue. People had said to us, we, we weren't really Anglican. We didn't really believe in Episcopal leadership, and that was nonsense. Um, we did. We just wanted the right, the right Episcopal model. Uh, we wanted the right, the right people as bishops. And so Andy getting consecrated, I was out in Chicago. It was fantastic uh, to just get a taste of uh, the ACNA at work uh, to be part of their um, their their sort of few days at their at their assembly. It was brilliant to see Andy can consecrated to see you know over thirty bishops and archbishops with their hands on Andy lines. And um, I remember listening to Nicholas Oko, and uh, he made me cry twice in his sermon. It wasn't that bad. It was just he was a man who you know he was I, as a young Anglican, I had longed for brave and clear Episcopal leadership. And I I sat in an auditorium over a thousand people and heard a Nigerian Archbishop preach an amazing sermon with great authority, courage, and I, my heart thought, we need this in England. Um, and so to have our Bishop consecrated was a great deal. Now then, the next stage in credibility was we have to have ordinations in England. Uh, there's no point sending our, our men to Kenya to Uganda, to Nigeria, to be ordained. We need ordination services in England. So that was June uh, last year. Then we said, let's get an ordination service. We had people that needed to be ordained in December. It was a great thing. We were encouraged by some people to keep it secret. And we said, no, 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 no. Let's, it's a worldwide event. So we said, great, let's let's live stream it. Let's make sure all the communications are good. Uh, we um, we had a, a good statement prepared, good questions. And then we, we, we did the event. I was very excited. And I got home. And I, I looked at the videos and I went, oh, no. Oh, wait a minute. No. There was not an earthquake going on during the live stream? 
Oh. Oh, no, I Trust thought me. for sure that oh, just something was going on during the live stream where the guy just couldn't keep his camera steady. Trust me. Look, I could have taught my, my I've got, my oldest son is six years old. Um, my oldest son can hold my camera like this steady. Um, even my oldest son doesn't drop it and do it. But anyway, so it was, oh, it was, we thought this is a, a moment, not, not to promote Amy, but to celebrate around the GAFCON world about what God was doing and one of our values with A is we, we want to do things excellently and so that just doesn't help does it when then people can talk about stylistic things uh, people talk about um, the idea of what what might have been worn what hasn't been worn in terms of our robes and no robes were we really Anglican but it didn't help having visually just a presentation that looked really naff um, so you know we want to learn our lessons I think one of our weaknesses is our operation side of things isn't as good as it could be, um, but we want to do better, and um, because you know we've got we've got real momentum, we've got a growing number of leaders who want to plant churches with us. Um, you know, last year, Kevin, we we had, I think we had seven Amy churches. Uh, there are now thirteen Amy churches, and and another one about to be planted in January. And when I first said to people. Uh, when I announced the, the decisions that Amy had made about 25 churches by 2025 and 250 by 2050, I, I, you know, some of my American friends thought, hey, bro, you're just far too low in your estimation. Think higher. Some of my British friends said, hey, you'll never get that because that's what the Brits are like. We're so negative. And, but I thought, could we do it? And then to see God grow us, I think, praise the Lord, we're growing. And, and I think by 2025, uh, we'll have more than 25 churches, um, but for the glory of Christ. So what is your um, desire then with the Church of England? Is your desire that they repent and return? Or is your desire that they just completely fold and you just take over? <laughs> well, that we would take over. <laughs> um, hey, well, um, no, it's a, ser it's a serious question, but it's a yeah. show where we do jovial. So... <laughs> Uh, so, if if you're gonna ask, is do, do I want Justin Welby to call me up after this interview and hand me the keys to Lambeth and uh, for a new office space? <laughs> um, perhaps me and Gavin could share the same space. Um, yes. I don't know. Um, <laughs> look, Anglicanism, as defined by the Thirty Nine Articles, uh, the Book of Common Prayer, and the Ordinal, um, I am convinced is is the best expression of the biblical faith and that is anglicanism and there are people there are people who are part of the institutional church of england who are not anglican uh, to be anglican is not about the institution you belong to it's about your convictional beliefs now part of your convictional beliefs is connectionalism and part of your convictional beliefs is, is healthy episcopacy so that's what gafcon does doesn't it it connects us through confession uh, con confession of our of our of our convictions so there are many in the Church of England who, um, some of them are not Christians. I think that's the huge issue um, of, of there are clergy out there teaching a different gospel. Um, so what do I want the clergy to do? Under God, I want them to repent and I want them to, some of them to become Christians. Um, I want some of them who've moved away from Anglican convictions to to come back and, and to believe those things. Um, I, want, um, I want to see leaders look after the sheep. Um, so often it's at the le level of leadership, isn't it? So uh, there are so many wonderful brothers and sisters in, in Anglican churches in England who are starving to death spiritually uh, because they're not being fed the good, wholesome word of God, which is what Anglicans do. Uh, they've been starved of good Episcopal leadership. Uh, they've been sold a lie about what mission is. And um, so, of course, under God's spirit, we want to see massive repentance, massive reformation. Uh, go back to the beginning. That was the that was the cry of the Reformation, wasn't it? Ad Fontaine. Let's go back to the sources. Let's go back to the beginning. Uh, let's go back to our founding documents. Okay, that, of course, that's a prayer. Um, do I think it's going to happen? Um, well, God can do it. Of course, He can do it. Uh, but it, in our country, if my if my government didn't plan for the worst, uh, they should be ejected from government because that's just naive and stupid. Um, they, they try and prepare for the best, but you, you, you have to plan for worst case scenarios. Um, the urgent need in England is we've got to reach this country for Jesus. Um, one, of the, one of the greatest barriers, so I'm on mission at the moment, so I'm not in my hometown. I'm down on a, a mission trip with some church family. 
-hmm. And I met uh, I met a lady last night, and she said to me two weeks ago I got some bad news. Uh, she said I, um, tem terminal cancer. That's it. Nothing else can be done. So I said to her, are you, are, you, are you thinking about what happens next? And she said, yeah. I said, um, what are you thinking? She said, I'm afraid to die. I said, why? And I said in my nice, compassionate way, why are you afraid of dying? And well, she says, it's not about where I'm going to go. Um, I'm, I, it's about my family. And I said, where are you going to go? And she said, I'm going to go to heaven because I'm a good person. And I said, um, no, you're not. And she said, how do you know I'm not? And I said, because the Bible teaches that you're a sinner, I'm a sinner, and we need a great savior. Now, she is inoculated against the gospel because she has been told by many, many clergy over many years that she's That's a right. good it, person. It, and this is what the church teaches. That's if what it you're teaches. you're good, it. you're going to heaven. That's what it teaches. So yeah. there are many Anglican clergy, or I'll call them C of E clergy because they're not really Anglican. Um, but they, they tell people at baptisms and funerals that they're nice, good people and they'll go to heaven. So we need to reach people for Jesus in, in this country. Now, I pray for the reformation of the Church of England. Uh, but we, uh, Anglican Mission in England, want to play our part in reaching new people for Jesus. We want a healthy Anglicanism. So we've still got a long way to go in terms of our connectionalism. Uh, we're relationally strong and, and we're growing. But we're, hey, if you look at our constitution, if you look at our our we don't have any canons to, to connect us together officially, but we have said that we're not going to do not not going to do anything until we get our um, everything teed up and everything arranged. We're going to be compelled by the gospel, but it may, it matters to us. We've got to be connected properly, but we're going to be compelled by the gospel to plant churches, and and who knows what God will do? Will He create an alternative Anglican church um, in England, an alternative Anglican church in Europe? I don't know what God's planning to do, um, but I'm convinced that uh, we don't want to be part of anything that is toxic, toxic for the gospel. Because at the heart of it all, there are presenting issues, Kevin. There are presenting issues of sexuality. There are presenting um, issues of, of, of the, the clarity and authority of the Bible. But at the heart of it all, uh, it goes back to people transforming the gospel um, into something else. Um, so that's my long answer. No, I, well, <laughs> which is the magic of Anglican TV. Nobody with a collar can give less than a 20 second answer. Yeah, we, we fully encourage that. that but you story. look at uh, places like Trinity, Holy Brampton, or Holy Trinity Brampton. Um, there are successful places within the Church of England where the gospel is being preached. How do they feel about uh, uh, the Anglican mission in England? Uh I've got I've got friends who are part of those networks. Um, I think friends who are part of those networks would uh, would they they love what we're doing because it's gospel work. Mm -hmm. um, I think they they sometimes struggle with why can't we do it in in the structures of the Church of England? Uh, people have different conscience issues about this uh, about when is the time if you're to leave if you're not to leave. Um, for me, I I was a Church of England minister for twelve years, ordained in two thousand and five. Um, when I planted a church last year with the Anglican Mission in England, I didn't want to do it within the structures of the Church of England. Um, I didn't want to be part of that. I, I wanted a, a, I wanted an Episcopal leadership for a young man like me that would that would care for me, pray for me, that would uh, inspire me, that would rebuke me, correct me. I had spent too long, Kevin, in, in in a Church of England parish where basically what you said is you kept the bishop as far away from you as you could. Uh, in case they did any damage, okay. In and case that's a, that is appalling. It is no, appalling. It is appalling. So yeah. I, it is appalling. Um, but in England, we've got so used to bishops being really bad uh, that what we we essentially function as independent congregationalists, uh, and that is not what we are. I remember when I came across to Chicago, I had a time. I spent a bit of time with Stuart Ruck, Bishop Stuart Ruck, and um, uh -huh. who was yeah. um, he was we, organizing, yeah. Uh, yeah, of the ACNA, yeah, and I. I met him for a few minutes and I thought, this is a fine man. I want to learn from his wisdom. So he took me out for lunch for about a couple of hours talking about church planting, leadership, evangelism. And then at one point in the conversation, he said to me, um, from this point on, I'm going to pastor you. Um, I've got to talk to, to you, not about church leadership, but about you. Because mm -hmm. he said, you're a, you're a dad, uh, you're a husband, you've planted a church. And as a result of Andy Lyons' consecration, 
and the work of Amy will increase. So let's talk about how you're going to do it. And I went, okay. <laughs> and then for the rest of the time, he, he, he talked to my soul. And then we, I remember we drove back to the car park. Uh, we prayed in the car. And then as he prayed for the lost people of Chicago, he, he, had, he, he was crying. And I walked away from the car thinking, that is a model of Episcopal leadership that I want to experience. Because by instinct, I, I need that. And I don't know how the guys in the, in, in, in the institution of church are doing it. Maybe they just want to be left alone. One of the challenges, of course, is not just what you say, but what you don't say. And there's real pressure, isn't there, on certain issues in the Church of England to keep quiet, to say this is not quite the time to, um, to say these things. Um, sometimes I wonder if that's a lack of conviction in the sovereignty of God, but that's another issue. We can always talk about that sometime if you want. Um, but actually, an utter confidence that God's word is true, that God controls the outcome, allows us to say things with real clarity. So there's my answer. No, no, it, it, it is interesting. Uh, I know all the, the ACNA bishops, and they're all the A-team. They're first stringers. You know, it, you don't have to worry about who you're putting in the game because, uh, you know, they're all what you would expect a bishop to be. Uh, they have, you know, some have their flaws and stuff like that, but you don't worry about an ACNA bishop showing up and uh, accidentally uh, preaching a little heresy here or there. And um, hey, we've uh, got Foley. so Foley Beach is coming to this country. That's um, right. Next week, mm -hmm. and doing a little tour, and so he's coming to meet. We're really privy. So our, our Amy executive team um, are meeting a week on Friday, and we've got a special time with Foley and Dandy Lines because we want to hear his wisdom. The man's a, a passionate evangelist. He's he's been through. I, I guess in many ways, I see our situation in England. We're just like America, but we're 10 years behind you. Um, we want to learn from what you guys did well, what the mistakes you make. Hey, we're always doing it. I've got some mates. So um, Alan Hawkins and Dan Alger from the ACNA. Sure. So Dan runs uh, always forward. And I think Alan's now, um, you know, Foley's kind of right-hand man. is basically his chaplain now, but he's been yeah, canon of development for the ACNA. Those guys have been incredibly useful for us, credible friends, spending time with us, giving us wisdom. We don't want to make it up without any wisdom from those who've walked the path before us. Uh, but neither do we want to just be so, so hindered from doing anything because we're always having conversations so that nobody gets upset. And um, we want to press on, keep relationships strong, um, and and learn from you know what's going on around the world. One of the great things for you know from this perspective from Britain. We, we Brits are really bad instinctively at learning from other people because we're so proud. We think we've got the empire. No. And, no, yeah, take that yeah. back. <laughs> yeah, well, this is a Scotsman saying this. This is a Scotsman who's been oppressed for, for hundreds of years by the English. But look, the, the Anglican world, like, out at GAFCON, you, you look at where the leadership is coming from. Um, and it is not from England. Um, and I praise God for our North American, our South American, our Asian, our African brothers and sisters. There's a, a wonderful, healthy Anglicanism. So when you actually confess the same things, you see beautiful, diverse color. <laughs> I want to be part of that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be part of um, an institution that never defines its terms, because if it defined its terms, it would split apart. Um, and that is True the Church words. of England. <laughs> well, I want to thank you for your time. We've come up on a, a good hard 25 minutes, uh, which in <laughs> any Anglican video is a lot. <laughs> so, um, and we hope to uh, talk to you again soon, maybe after uh, uh, Archbishop Foley, future head of GAFCON, uh, stops by and say hi. You can uh, update us on how that went. Hey, uh, it I should be it. interesting because uh, he's going to be on the shores of the UK. We'd love it very much, Kevin. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Lee. God bless. Thank you.